Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend, the best weekend ever. I say it's the only Christian holiday left because the Grinch stole Jesus and the rabbit stole Easter, so we have Thanksgiving left. Amen. Are y'all glad to be here this morning? Did y'all already eat turkey? Everybody's kind of docile this morning. Eh? So, well, we had a great first service, and I was a little crazy. I'm going to be a little calmer this service. But uh, we just had a great time, and it's great. I love Thanksgiving. I really do. I love it. It's the best, my favorite time of the year. And uh, it's good to have Sarah and Jason here with us this weekend. <laughs> Pastor Jason. Pastor Jason. And I uh, love, love, love to hear her worship. And uh, I love to hear Jason. I can always tell when Jason in church because he has this clap that's unique to every clap in the world. It's like, boom, it's just like echoing. And I was like, Jason's here. Feel him in the house. So it's great. Worship team, y'all just killed it today. Come on, let's give the worship team a little love. And I love our church. Last uh, few weeks ago, we had an opportunity to give to Neil family, uh, Neil's family, and we took up a great offering, just a spontaneous offering that blessed that family in Iraq. And I just love the heart of our church. And, you know, our church really is a giving church, not just of their finances, but of their time and their love for people. And I think that is powerful. And so uh, we're going to have two opportunities, you know, the, the children of Acuna coming up and on our Christmas weekend services, you're going to have a chance to give back to them. And so pray into that. And uh, $23, that's not a lot of money. Um, you can spend that on lunch real easy. And uh, just giving up a lunch or a dinner to help these kids have a month of uh, food and opportunities, not a whole lot of money. It's a, and so it's a blessing. So just pray into that. And uh, I, my goal is to, to have 500 partners um, and so I hope our church, not just our church, obviously, but 500 partners by the end of February. And so um, we're excited about that. So pray into that and it'll be a good time. And then you get to start thinking about and praying about this Sunday next year. So the Sunday before Thanksgiving next year, we're going to have our big give. And uh, we got a lot coming up for our house um, we got a new, we're going to be adding on. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to have more room. We're going to have more opportunities for places to um, to do things. We're going to have some new, about 5,000 square foot we're adding to our building. And so that's going to be great. And, of course, how many how many has ever added on to your house or done anything to your house? What does it take? Money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> that, too, takes patience, too. But we have a good plan for this, and so we're, we're gonna, we, we hope this is all going to work out well. But we're, this year, this time, next year, is going to be a big gift. And we want to create a, an annual opportunity to give an, a harvest offering or whatever you want to call that. Um, and as we give going into this season and just planting some seeds in the kingdom of God. So you got a whole year to be saving up for that and thinking about that. And, of course, we'll have more information out there. So if you're thinking about, hey, God, what can I do for next year, and you're praying into that, you can start putting back a little a little money every month. And so um, when this season rolls around, you'll be ready to give abundantly. Um, I, 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 I'm going to just share with you today for a little bit um, a scripture that the Lord laid in my heart for this Thanksgiving service. And that really, honestly, I'm not joking, this is my, I love Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving is the, the greatest season of all because when we live out of a place of grateful heart, there's something amazing about that. And um, I just love to share the love of Jesus with people and, and the grace of God with people. And, and I'm so, I got so much to be thankful for. And uh, even on my worst day, I have uh, my 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 very worst day is better than than a lot of people's best day. And I and I'm thankful for that. I just thankful for the goodness of God in our life and so I just love this season. But the Lord dropped this little passage of scripture in my heart and I thought well that's an unusual Thanksgiving text, but it's from Revelations and don't worry I'm not going to break off of the Revelations preaching, but I want to use this passage in Revelations 12. And it says and they did overcome him because 
of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony and they did not love their life unto death they did overcome because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony i think it's uh, putting that scripture in context is just talking about the spirit of the dragon that come in try to snuff out the church and destroy the church and uh, the scripture's really laying it out for us there that they did overcome, that the, the enemy is not going to win, and that the church is an overcoming church. Yeah. It's not a church. We're, we're the head and not the tail. We're, we're blessed beyond, and we're, we're the great. We're, I must say we're great. What makes us great is because God makes us great, and, and we're, we're part of a team that's, that's going to win. I'm on, I've already read the back of the book. We're the winners. Yeah. How many has read the back of the book and know that we're the winners? And so, so no matter what comes in our life, no matter what happens in our life, no matter what we go through in life, we are on the winning team. And I think that is awesome. I like to be on the winning team. Do you like being on the winning team? I love being on the winning team. I, I don't like to be with a bunch of losers. Can I get a better amen? <laughs> amen. I, I'm, I'm not this guy, but I don't, don't dislike the guy who, you know, when they're little kids especially, they're like, well, I'm for so-and-so team this year. Well, why are you for them? Well, they're winning. Somebody said, well, oh, you jumped ship on your team and you went over to the winning team. I don't know if that's a bad idea or not. Get on the winning team. It's not such a bad idea. So we get on the winning team. We join the winning team. We're on the winning team. On heaven's team is the winning team. And I'm believing God for supernatural things in my life. Are y'all believing for supernatural things? Okay, four of y'all are. Awesome. Let's try that again. How many are believing for supernatural things in your life? You're believing God for something great in your life. And if we're believing God for something great in our life, it's real important that we don't look at the negatives of life because we'll get caught up in those negatives. But we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the testimony of the goodness of God. I love this passage in Matthew 5. It's, this is really encouraging word here. It says, how enriched we are when we bear the wounds of of being persecuted for doing what is right. How, we're better f- for that. For when, we, when you experience the, for, for that is when you experience the realm of heaven's kingdom. When we're being persecuted is when we get to step into a heavenly kingdom, a realm of the spirit, the realm of the supernatural. When everybody's patting you, the Bible says, woe to those who pat you on the back, I'll tell you and tell you how great you are. You better be careful of that. But when we're being persecuted for the name of Jesus, for the kingdom of God, we step into this realm of the supernatural. We get to experience God on a whole nother level. How ecstatic you can be when people insult and persecute you and speak all kinds of cruel lies about you because you, your love for me. So leap for joy. So leap for joy since your heavenly reward is great. For you're being rejected the same way as the prophets were before you. I always tell people this when they're complaining and, oh, life is bad and I don't like this and somebody said that and somebody hurt my feelings. Like, hey, man, you really, your life's not that bad. Until you've been stoned to death, boiled in oil, hung on a cross upside down, life is pretty good. Yeah. You've got a lot to be thankful for. Uh, and and we, get, we, we just get all upset over the little smallest things when, when honestly, when we're walking in kingdom light and we're walking with Jesus and we're living our life above and not beneath, you gotta, you're, there is going to be some persecution. But, hey, thank God for it. Thank God for that persecution because in the middle of all that persecution, I'm moving in heavenly places. I'm walking in a heavenly realm. Your lives are like salt among the people. But if you like salt become bland, how can your saltiness be restored? Flavorless salt is good for nothing and will be thrown out and trampled on by others. Somebody say, we're the salt of the earth. You know that when you put salt on meat, the meat don't make the meat salty, but the salt makes the meat, the salt makes the meat salty. The meat doesn't make the salt meaty. There's what I'm trying to say. You, the, the meat doesn't affect the salt. The salt affects the meat. A few grains of salt can go a long way in making something taste good. As a matter of fact, the salt, you cannot see the salt on the substance, but you can feel the effects of it. The other day I was cooking some food at my house, and I was 
I had some meat on the grill and I was salting the meat and I was using one of those big old huge salt shakers and the top flipped open where you pour it out and a spoon and it went boom, dumped on the meat. I was like, ah! trying to get that salt off there because I knew that much salt was going to make that meat taste way too salty. And a little bit of salt to go a long way. A little bit of salt to go a long way. So we were created to be the salt of the earth. And, and what we bring and what we carry changes the world around us. And we, are in, we, we affect people's life because God has chosen us to be the salt and to bring his goodness to the world. Bring his goodness to the world. The scripture says, let your light, let your light, uh, let your lives light up the world and let others see your light from a distance. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hill? And who would light a lamp and then hide it in an obscure place? Instead, place it where everyone in the house can benefit from it. So don't hide your light. Let the light shine brightly before others so that, the, so that the commendable things that you do will shine as lights upon them, and then they will give praise to your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine on earth. You know, so many times we as Christians, especially being politically correct, we want to make sure we don't offend nobody. I mean, we're so we're so sensitive about being offensive when it comes to christianity and then we say and do all kinds of other things which i don't understand but we're so sensitive about being politically correct with our christianity and so on sunday when we're with everybody we're oh yeah this is great we're just telling all the goodness of god but then on monday morning we'll camouflage our christianity and walk into and so make sure that we don't offend no one with our christianity and we've almost allowed the enemy to snuff out our witness, to blow out our candle, is because we want to be unoffend, un, not offending someone. But here's what the God's called us to do. He's called us to be the light of the world. He's called us to be the salt. And I'm just going to tell you that if you literally live like you're supposed to live, you're going to offend somebody. You're going to offend somebody with the gospel. Somebody said, I, I, I don't want to be called a Bible thumper. Well, I, call me what you want to call me. I want to carry what, I, what God's put in my lap to carry. And he's given me this blessing to be a light to the world. This is my calling. This is my purpose. This is what I'm here for. And I was just, I just love my wife because she comes home and, and she, you know, Angela's the steady person. I don't know how many of y'all know her, but she does not hang in from the chandeliers one week and, whoa, ain't God good, ain't God awesome. And then the next week she's, you know, trying to drag her out of the pit. Her life is very steady, very, and I love when she comes home because she has become the light in her where she works where people she don't go preaching and she don't care a big bible to work she don't wear a name tag my husband's the pastor and i'm the pastor's wife and we're christians and we do this she lives her life as salt in the earth and people are very attracted when we have this saltiness about us and so they come to us and they say hey they may not they may not uh come to you uh, in the good times, but in the bad times, I'll come say, hey, could you come pray for me? Hey, can you come help me? Because God has put us in these places to be a light to those around us. Yeah. It's our purpose. And here's what so oftentimes happens is we as the church, we cluster in groups of people for our, for, for, to get together. Hey, hey, let's get together with a bunch of people. Let's go get a bunch of people that's salty. All the salt come together. God's called us to be salt to the darkness, to the, to, to the world. And we need to just go out and just be whatever God has called us to be and do whatever God has called us. If we're called to heal, let's go heal the sick. Let's go raise the dead. Let's go open the blinded eyes. Let's go touch lives. Let's be a force in the earth of the nature and the purpose of God. And let your light so shine so that they look at you and they see heaven in you. They see that what glorifies the Father. And that we live our thanksgiving every single day of our life. You know, the enemy would love to come and just blow out our candle, intimidate us, put fear in our hearts so that we would not burn for him, that we would not burn with this passion for the goodness of God, the purpose of God, the things of God. Our testimony being the very glory of God, what God has done in our life, and that God has given a victory in our lives. We live in a place of victory. We walk in a place of victory.
And there's nothing more powerful than your praise. And I love this morning. Our praise team was just awesome this morning. That was beautiful. I just, I, I, I just amazed every Sunday. At, 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 and when we come in this house, and I'm so thankful for the worship that's in this house. And I love that we have instruments and we have singing. But I'm talking about a life of praise. I'm talking about what goes on outside of the four walls. That's our worship. That's every day of our life. And Peyton preached a great message a few months ago on our life being a life of worship. And that we carry worship. That we are worship. And that everywhere we go, we share the goodness of God. That's a beautiful thing. And when we praise God and we give thanksgiving to God, there's a, we step into this faith of the supernatural realm. There's something so powerful about being thankful. I love to pull up to a driving window and, 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 and just it, it, you go through and you see these people at these drive-ins. And I, I mean, honestly, that's got to be one of the worst jobs ever. Because, you know, you never know who the next person is going to pull up to that window. And they're, they have all kinds of attitude. And, you know, and you're, they're, they're, you're just, and you're probably bracing. I don't know. I've never worked in a drive through window. But I, I just feel like they're bracing like, okay, who is this next crazy person I'm going to have to deal with? And so I like to pull up to the window, and I like to find something good about that person at the window. It's like, hey, man, I love your smile. Uh, that smile is beautiful. You know what? When you smile, you're sharing the goodness of God. Well, they, I don't even know if they're a Christian or not or anything, but if they're smiling, I find something good to say about them. And, you know, we, we get all upset about over the littlest things. Like, we can get mad about our uh, getting a bag and our french fries are not in it. And, you know, they forgot our french fries. You know, if I go to Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A forgets my Chick-fil-A sauce, man. And I get all the way home and I don't have any Chick-fil-A sauce, man. That's a bummer right there. Because you know the chicken and the, it, it, the whole thing with the chicken is the Chick-fil-A sauce. That's the deal. And you get home, you got Chick-fil-A sauce. And, and you think about, well, man, I fi- why do they forget my Chick-fil-A sauce? And I got to drive all the way back and my chicken's going to be cold before I get to get my Chick-fil-A sauce. Does it really matter? Does it really matter? The gratefulness of God, the goodness of God, the blessings of God are on our life. And we get caught up in such little bitty trivial things that we don't look around us to see what we're thankful for. And when you are thankful and you have an attitude of gratitude, you open up your heart to the realm of the supernatural. But when you complain and you're always mumbling and griping and nothing's good enough, you open yourself up to the realm of the supernatural too called the enemy and you and you begin to give praise to the enemy and that you the bible says don't give place to the devil and so you're complaining and you're moaning and grumbling gives place to the devil and you tell the and you talk about how bad life is and how this is and that is and you give place to the enemy but when you go over here and you're saying man god is good when my bank account is empty, I still say God is good. And when, when life is not going the way it ought to go, God is still good. Amen. You know, I was just a few minutes ago, I had to get up and walk because I didn't want to walk around up here. My back hurt so bad, you know. I, I could just get focused on the little what's hurting in my back. Oh, you know, oh, my back is hurting. Life is bad. You know what? This too shall pass. All these little things in life that we get focused on, and they become what we think about instead of giving praise to God. How could we change the world around us if we were just thankful? Thankful. God, I thank you. I thank you because you have blessed me. I thank you, Lord, for, for, for getting up this morning and being able to have some clothes to put on and having food to eat. How many times have you said the blessing over your food? It was just routine. Thank you for this food. Is it really thankfulness? Thankfulness? God, thank you. There's a lot of people today that don't have anything to eat. And I'm blessed with way more than I need. I'm thankful, God, for the car I drove. I looked in our parking lot this morning, and, and there's a lot of nice cars out there. I'm thankful, God, for the car that I drive. I'm thankful that I got a nice home to live in and has air conditioning in the summertime and heat in the winter. I'm thankful, God, for all the blessings that you have given me look i would preach this message today if i was in mexico where their homes were a little much much less than ours because wherever we are there's something to give thanks about 
This is not about just about American life. This is about having a life that's holy unto God and thankfulness unto God because we're blessed. Come on, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in my coming in. I'm blessed in my going out. I've got so many things to be thankful about. And here's the deal. I'm an overcomer because I start giving God the glory for my blessing. I start thanking God. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? I think about what Paul said when he said, except for the, except for the Lord, there go I. Except for the grace of God, my life would be that wreck. Except for the grace of God, I would be in that situation. But God has been good to me. I've got a lot to thank God about. He's been good to me. In Luke 17, in Luke 17, Jesus heals the lepers. But one of them that was a Samaritan just came back to Jesus, and he got at his feet, and he began to worship Jesus and thank Jesus for healing him. And it's a very powerful scripture right there that we can overlook, but he says to the one, he says, then Jesus said, to the healed man laying at his feet. Arise and go. It was your faith that brought you salvation and healing. God's kingdom realm is within you. Arise and go. You're, you're more than just not free from leprosy. You've been made complete. You've been made whole. Your faith has taken you to another level. Your faith is, and your thankfulness has entered you into another level. You've come into a new place in the understanding of the kingdom realm and the power of God. Out of my thankfulness, I step into a new realm of the Spirit. When I give thanks, it releases the power of grace on my life. When I give thanks, it releases more healing on my life. When I give thanks, it releases more blessing on my life. I start saying, God, I thank you. I thank you. I, I pre, I'm just so thought, thankful of all that you've done for me, God. In 2 Corinthians 2, God always makes his grace visible in Christ. He included us as partners in his endless triumph. Wow, that's so powerful. He makes us partners. He makes his part. Come on, Peyton, and help me a little bit. I won't kiss you this. Come on. I kissed him last service. I won't kiss him today. Maybe not. You want to kiss? Okay. It's my favorite son-in-law. He makes us partners. Our thankfulness makes us partners with Christ. We come into a partnership alignment and relationship. I want you to think how powerful this is. Who do you want to be partners with? You want to be partners with the creator of the universe, the one who spoke the whole world into existence? You want to be partners and realize that when I give thanks, when I enter into this, I enter into partnership with God. Now watch this. As I enter into partnership with God, out of my heart of thanksgiving and the goodness of God, I enter into a place where I have opportunity to share with God my dreams. Come on, somebody. Now I am getting to dream with God. I'm getting to dream about the things of God. And I get to believe God for greater things in my life. For greater things in my life. But when I partner with the enemy, when I partner with the enemy, he takes all of my dreams and tries to crush them. When I partner with the enemy and I don't give thanks, he begins to remind me of my past. He begins to remind me of what people say that I am. He begins to remind me of, of the things that I will never be. But when I partner with God, he starts saying, hey, what are your dreams? Let's dream together. Let's walk together. Let's see the greatness of God together. I believe in you. There's a partnership that happens through my praise and my life. And he said, we're overcomers. We're overcomers because Christ died on the cross for our sins. We're overcomers because he's given us life and he's given it to us more abundant. We're overcomers. We, we have partnered with, with God. That's amazing. Thank you. We're partnered with him. Includes Christ who includes us in his partnership with his endless triumph. There's that word again. His endless victory. Over and over again, there's victory in my life. So I know from the outset that no matter what I face, I win. God, come on, somebody. Hey, praise God for that. 
That's really good. Okay. That's really good, pastor. Woo! Awesome. Good word. I'm partnered with God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm going to kick some devil behind. I'm partnered with God. I'm not losing ground. I'm taking ground. I'm not down. I'm up. No matter what comes against me, guess what? I win. That's pretty awesome. Well, well, Pastor, you're saying you win, but you've been through this storm and that storm. Yeah, but I came out the other side. Don't look at the storm. Look at the victory from the storm. I win. I'm a winner. And through the, our yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere we go. We have become the, become the unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one Amen. to everyone. A perfume of life to those who are being saved and an odor of death to those who are perishing. To the unbeliever, all of this stinks, but to us who believe, we become the odor. We become the very fragrance of heaven. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Have you ever, have you ever had your favorite cologne, perfume, and you, 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 somebody walked by you and you went, mm, I know that. I'm familiar with that smell. That, man, that smells good. Or your favorite you know, young living oils. <laughs> you know, I know some people walk in the room because I can smell them. Because they, they smell good. They got that young living oil on and I've recognized it. And it's, yeah, man, I smell that. That's that lavender. <laughs> man, I smell that lavender. I smell that, that, that citrus. I smell that cedar wood. Mm. I smell that. It smells so good. It's a fragrance, and you, you recognize. You know what? The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. When we've tasted of the goodness of God, we can sense the goodness of God. And when we've tasted the greatness of God, we have this, we have this appetite for more of that. And, and we become the very fragrance of God, and we, we spread the goodness of God everywhere we go. Our lives become the very aroma. I was, I was just laughing when I was, when I was working on this. I was just laughing. I was like, well, so you might want to just ask somebody one day when they're having a bad attitude, say, how do you smell? <laughs> What's going on with your smell? Because your smell don't smell like it ought to smell. Something's wrong with your smell. Are you not carrying? When's the last time you give God thanks? Here's what I know. I know that when you're going through it, when you're going through the storm, when you're going through the crisis, when you're going through the situation, when all hell has broke loose in your life, if you'll start giving God praise, if you'll start thanking God, you can praise your way out of those situations because when you start lifting up the name of Jesus, the aroma of heaven comes and it begins to fill the room and it begins to fill your life. It's changing. We're overcomers. Somebody say we're overcomers. Worship team, y'all can come. Our thankfulness is a sweet aroma of the grace of God. Amen. Our fragrance is a sweet aroma. It's the grace of God being carried out throughout the earth. It's the grace of God touching people's life. It's the grace of God shared with everyone we come in contact with. You know what the aroma does? It gives hope to the hopeless. It does. We walk among hopeless people. But guess what? We carry hope to the hopeless. We carry the grace of God to the broken. We, car we carry uh, this peace to those that are un in unrest. When their lives are being tossed to and fro and they don't know where, which way to go. And then here comes us, the salt of the earth, the light of the world, a city set up on a hill. And we walk into the atmosphere because we've been living in a place of thanksgiving. We change the atmosphere. Are y'all believing what I'm saying today? You know, Joseph had a dream. It's a powerful dream. And when he started dreaming this powerful dream of what God was going to do in his life, he made a fatal mistake. He 
He shared it with the complainers. Years ago, I was a young minister, and I had a friend of mine call me. And he said, hey, Marvin, I want to share something with you. He said, the Lord called me to tell you today. Find some dreamers to share your dreams with. Don't share your dreams with the dream killers. Don't share your dreams with those who are always looking at life as gloom and doom. I was going through a struggle one time. I was just remembering years ago, I was trying to pastor the church here, and it was one of those seasons where it seemed like there was more wrong than right. You ever been in one of those seasons of life? Like where it felt like every, Lord, I'll praise you. Just give me a, just wave a flag at me. Just let me see. It felt like more wrong than right. And I called this guy up, and I was, thought he would encourage me in the Lord. And, and I was just kind of sharing with him wh where I was at. He said, have you ever thought about, you're probably not a pastor. And that you're probably not called to that city. And you're, man, when I got off the phone with him, I was like, well, I'm just going to go jump off a cliff somewhere. <laughs> Thanks for the encouraging word. Thanks for the inspiration. I feel better now. I, I feel lifted up. I feel, man, I feel like I could dream again. I'm glad I didn't listen to that word that day. I'm glad I hung up the phone and I got into a place of praise. And I started thanking God. God, I thank you. I thank you. Here's what I found out. When I'm, when I'm in this place like this, I just get around a bunch of worshipers, a bunch of thankful people. People that are grateful. People that are, are saying, look what the Lord has done. One of my favorite things about Pastor Tim is that when, that Tim, you can be, I, I've known there's times, I've known that Tim's going through the fire. And I call him up and say, hey, buddy, how you doing? Because I'm called to give him encouraging words. He said, everything's great. Really? That's awesome. Then he's encouraged in the Lord. He might be walking through it, but he's always looking for the goodness of God. I ain't going to call any names, but there's some people I wouldn't call if I was going through the fire because they're going to drag me right on further down because they're always complaining. They're always thinking of the worst. I'm just telling you today, you've got so much to be grateful for. Quit looking for those things and start looking for the goodness of God. I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want you to start thinking of how many great things in your life. I want you to start recording in your mind right now the goodness of God in your life. The blessings of God in your life. The power of God in your life. When the enemies came in like a flood to rise up against you, the Spirit of the Lord would raise up and he would come and take charge over that situation. How many times has God shown up in your life and for a, had a, you had a breakthrough moment? And not one single time in your life has God ever abandoned you. He's never abandoned you. He's never walked out on you. He's never, he's never said, hey, I don't love you no more. He's always been faithful. He's always been good in your life. And it's in those moments that we begin to praise God that we begin to really see the goodness of God. Joy for our journey, healing for our nation. We are the salt of the earth. We're the very presence of God in the earth. We're the very goodness of God in the earth. We're healers. We come to bring healing, the very aroma of God. We come to bring salvation. Don't let the devils blow your light out. When I was a kid, we used to sing that song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And my favorite part of that song was, don't let Satan blow it out. I loved that part. And we got to that part where we said, don't let Satan blow it out. There was something I would just, don't let Satan blow it out. Because, you know, there was that def moment where you, you felt conquering. You felt like Satan can't touch me.
Don't let the world snuff out your revival. Don't let a bad day determine your destiny. Don't let a situation in your life blow out your fire for God. Just remember, He's coming through for you. (laughs) Give Him thanks. God, you're good. Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures forever. Your grace will never leave me. Your mercy's made new every morning. You're so good, God. I'm on the winning team. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. You're so good. As our prayer team comes.